So today we're going to see if we can get a usable drum recording using only one mic. Let's check it out. So the first time I heard of one mic recording for drums was watching an Eric Valentine video. He's a famous American record producer. You should check him out. He has an awesome YouTube channel um, and I'm a big fan of his. And basically he was exploring more vintage sounds and seeing what he could get out of one mic on the drum kit. And he really liked the whole minimalist philosophy. So this video is kind of inspired by him. It's crazy how we don't even think of micing a drum kit with a single mic anymore, because it's so easy for us these days to slap as many mics on the kit as possible, given the increase in technology, the availability of microphones, the ability to multi-track record. And so it doesn't even make sense to record with one mic, since micing with multiple mics gives us so much flexibility. But that brings me to the question, can we get a usable recording with just one mic? So when we're using one mic on the drum kit, we're imposed by a bunch of limitations. I had to think through some of the big ones and there were four big ones that I could think of. The first is lack of control of room sound because we can't blend between close mics and room mics. The second is the control over the drum sound because the drum sounds different when you mic it from the top versus the side versus the bottom. The third is the proximity effect. So we get a massive low end boost by putting the microphone closer to the drum rather than further away, we lose low end. And the fourth is control over individual drum volume. So when we've got mics on all the drums, we can individually control the volume of each of those drums. So when we're thinking about micing drums with a single mic, I think it's important to consider these four factors and work out how we control for them. So to control for the room sound, I placed my absorbers around the drum kit and I also placed an additional absorber behind the microphones to minimize the amount of room sound and reflected sound we were picking up and maximize the direct sound. To control for the drum sound, I think it's important to pick a position that gets the best of each drum. So you wanna make sure we're getting a bunch of attack and a bunch of low end. And so in my mind, that's probably somewhere in front of the drums where we can really get the whack from the kick drum and also a bit of attack from the top head of the snare. To control for the lack of proximity effect, I think we will just have to use EQ and post to boost up the low end. And to control for the lack of individual control we have over each drum volume, I think there's two things we can do. The first is mic placement, making sure that the mic's in a position that is picking up each drum and cymbal roughly equally. And second, we've got to make sure we play the drums really evenly. So we don't want to be crash heavy or hi-hat heavy or snare heavy, making sure that we're playing the drums in a nice balanced and even way. So now for the test, I'm going to use two different microphones. One's a Cascade Fathead ribbon microphone and the other is an AT4040 condenser microphone. And the benefit of these is they have different pickup patterns and might affect the sound differently. I'm gonna place the capsules right next to each other to minimize the difference that each mic is picking up. And we're gonna try two different mic positions, one in front of the drum kit and then one overhead. And we can see which works out better. Lastly, I'm gonna play the drums along to my intro soundtrack, just so you can get a sense of what the drums sound like in context of music, because ultimately that's the purpose of recording. So let's check it out. All right, so before we get into the demo, I'll just give you guys a quick overview of how I mix the tracks in Logic. Um, so we've got the four tracks here, uh, the 804040, which is the condenser, and the fat head, which is the ribbon mic, both in front of the kit, and then the overheads. Um, and if we go into the mixing pane, basically what I've done is sent the tracks to a bus, um, and then we've got a, another send here, which just has some room reverb with a Space Designer plugin. Um, it's got a small room set up with 12 milliseconds pre-delay, um, some EQ, just to cut off the low end and boost some of the mid-range to really make the room sound stick out. Uh, and then that feeds into the corresponding um, master track or master bus uh, for the drum sound, which has a pretty simple signal chain, just four plugins, a compressor, saturation, EQ, and a limiter. So I can make sure that the volume's consistent between all the tracks. So I'll just hit play and I'll disable each plugin one by one and solo the drum track so you can hear what effect they're having. So let me just walk through a few of the settings that I've got on each of the plugins. Uh, so on the compressor, four to one ratio, uh, the threshold set, so it's taking about eight to 10 dB off the snare drum, um, the attacks at 12 milliseconds, and the release is around 690. And let me just give you a demo of how the release is affecting the sound. I found this was really crucial for the one mic setup because as the release drops, you really hear the room sound and the tail of the snare drum come up. Um, and the longer the release, the more the compressor clamps down and buries the room sound. So uh, let me give you a quick demo of that one. So 
I found somewhere around 690 was the ballpark for me. Next on the saturation plugin, I've just got a few bands set up and the saturation is increased as the frequency increases. And this is just emulating a bit of a tape sound, helping to add some warmth to the drums. And then lastly, the EQ. Um, there's some fairly substantial EQ moves on here. So with a low end, I've got a 9 dB boost to really make the kick thump and then a 10 dB boost on the snare drum around 220 hertz to really make the snare drum cut through. And a substantial mid cut to uh, cut some of the muddiness out of the sound. A boost at around 1600 to really uh, help the snare cut through the mix. And then because this is a ribbon microphone, I really cranked the EQ on the top end. So you can see there's a 9 dB boost from about 4 kilohertz up. So I've mixed the four tracks as closely as I can. And with a limiter, I've set it so that it's taking off between zero and one dB of each of the peaks um, so that the tracks are volume matched as equally as possible. All right, I think it's time to get into the demo. Enjoy. So if I were to pick a favorite, I'd pick the setup where the mics were in front of the drum kit. And that's because they just picked up a more natural full sound of the kit. When the mics are overhead, they don't pick up any kick drum and the cymbals and the snare just have this really unnatural feel to them. And then if I were to pick between the condenser and the ribbon, that's a tough one because I like bits and pieces of both. I think the ribbon had a much fuller low end that even with EQ, I couldn't get the condenser to match it. But then the condenser just had this really nice clarity, particularly to the snare drum that I couldn't replicate with the fat head. And that's probably because it was picking up more of the room sound because of the cardioid pattern and the ribbon mic because of the figure eight pattern was picking up more of a direct sound. The other big question for me is, would I actually use a one mic recording setup in practice? And I think it depends on the circumstance. If the song called for something that needed that one mic vibe or something that was a bit more vintage, it'd make sense. But I also think recording in this room with one mic isn't optimal because the room just doesn't sound that good. And so if I was using one mic, I'd probably want a really nice sounding room. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what you thought in the comments. Thanks. Mm -hmm.